Hello everyone, thank you once again for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. I'm actually going to give a little tutorial on how I take some of my pictures. Uh, I had a few requests wondering you know, how I got certain lightings and things like that uh, because I don't use pretty much, I don't use any Photoshop when it comes to my pictures. Uh, everything is all uh, lighting that I carefully placed uh, and everything so I'm going to show you how to get the same photos I receive without really have to doing any editing so but before I get started uh, please like subscribe love to hear from you so please leave a comment if you have any questions I'd love to hear that uh, so I'm going to show you right now just the materials that I use to help me get my shots uh, so first thing is um, because you're shooting toys uh, you need a tripod particularly a small one I use uh, this one because it allows me to get as low as I possibly can and I can bend it you know do a number of different angles whatnot so definitely uh, this kind of tripod um, also all these materials that I use I'll see if I can find links so you guys can be able to find this stuff on yourself uh, on your own so that you can use these for your photography to achieve the same goals uh, so there's that uh, the other thing I use is uh, poster board uh, I particularly use this one these are pretty cheap use black I like this one because it has black on one side and white on the other side so if I want to change get my backgrounds this particular video we're going to be using the black part because we want to eliminate as much light as possible uh, if you don't have a poster board you can get a black cloth you can like find these in any fabric store or anything like that or you know if you, if you have you know some kind of material that you can use you again you want to just eliminate as much light as possible so this is the stuff this here and also the poster board this is the stuff you're going to be using to put behind your figure to eliminate um, all light uh, when it comes to lighting uh, what I use is the aperture MC's uh, these things are absolutely amazing uh, they're very small compact um, you can get multiple colors all different kinds of colors that you can use to capture the lighting so these are what they look like out of the box you can see they're pretty small they're rechargeable uh, this actually has a little diffuser on it so you can take that off and you can get a really really bright light uh, so this is actually really good, really helpful. Uh, for this particular thing that we're going to be doing, you definitely want to use this diffuser because you don't want to have too much light coming through it creates a glare and it's just, just an all-out issue. But with this, it's actually really good because you can um, increase and uh, decrease the intensity of the lights. So that's definitely a, a plus. So the other nice feature about this is that right on the back, you have these two magnetic pieces which brings me to the next thing that I use which is clamp this is very you know typical thing you'll find this at a hardware store or whatnot uh, but basically you take this clamp and you can attach it to anything and the other nice thing is because it's magnetic I can stick that on there and uh, have my light placed anywhere I want in this particular case we're actually going to have the light directly above the figure so you can pretty much take this attach it to anything you want and then have that light shining directly down to achieve that uh almost like that i guess you could say that heavens look whatnot with the uh, with the spotlight so yeah this is actually pretty good if you don't have these lights um you could use like a flashlight you could use something like this uh the only issue that you might run into is you know you get uh, i mean it's very bright so to eliminate that you can maybe I'd say get like a paper towel or a tissue sheet of paper or something like that to use as a um, as kind of like a filter to not have too much light coming through so yeah so those are the things that we're pretty much going to be using for this picture and as we're going through I'll sh kind of show you the things that I do to get that really good shot uh, because what you want to do is you want to eliminate as much light as possible and have control over your light to achieve the goal so let's get started here we are we have our lighting set up uh, we have our 
camera, everything's in place. Uh, for anyone who's interested in the kind of camera I use, I use a Canon uh, SL3. It's a great camera. Actually, it's a great camera for beginners, and I have to admit that, uh, I mean, I've been in this, been using this camera for a couple of years now, but I still kind of consider myself a beginner because I'm still learning some things. Uh, so, yeah, this is this is a really, really good uh, camera to use. Uh, the lens I'm using is a 35 millimeter macro. Uh, you can use a kit lens. It really doesn't um, doesn't matter as long as you're able to get that close shot. But the, for this particular thing, I'm trying to get as much detail as possible. So that's the reason why I'm uh, using this particular lens. Now, as you can see from the settings that I have right now, uh, with the light that I'm using, uh, everything's bright. I mean, it's just capturing everything. Everything looks, looks really washed out and everything. Uh, so you can kind of get a good shot out of this, maybe, but it would just be too much glare, and that's really not what we're trying to go for today. Uh, so what I'm going to do, and what you'll see now, is uh, I'm going to lower the settings on this particular light uh, with the aperture lights, and, which is another great feature that this light has if you have a chance to pick these things up they're absolutely great when it comes to really any kind of photography or video these are great lights to use uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lower the percentage of the light so you'll be able to see you'll see it gets darker and darker as i go down and you'll see that some of the light starts to go away and it gets a little darker so that way we can get a really dramatic effect when it comes to the lighting. So I'm gonna, I'm, really I like to go as low as possible uh, for this. And as you can see, when I do that, you'll see this number right here, it, it tells me I'm going for a really long exposure, um, which is fine. Uh, it takes a while, it's gonna, you know, change 30 seconds, which is, you know, Totally fine because you want to get as much detail as possible because I have my ISO really low as you can see it's down to 100 and so uh, it's just a really good um, setting to get as much detail as possible so uh, but even still I still think he's got a little too much light more than what I would like to have uh, so and as you can see you're losing a lot of detail in his face here's where the changes comes in so because they're using the clamp and using the overhead light, uh, wherever you place the light will determine, you know, really how dramatic your shot is going to be. So with the clamp, now what I'm using, I, I have a clamp attached to one of my tripods so that I can move the light around however I want it. Uh, so I'm going to, as you can see where the light is, I'm going to go ahead and change this. As you can see, as I move it forward, it kind of gives you a little more light on the face and makes the thing a little more dramatic. Uh, so you have that shot, um, which you can see, you just get enough to kind of cover the eyes. And that, is, that really makes the figure stand out more because now he looks more realistic. You don't really see any toy look to his face because it covers the eyes and it allows the imagination to, you know, kind of fill in the gap as far as giving the realism to the figure. So if I go too much, you can see it kind of covers that, which is still a dramatic effect. It's still really good because I mean, that's just the detail of this, uh, of this figure that just makes it look, look good. But you can see how dramatic the light changes just from that. So it's, uh, you know, kind of looking like he's hiding in the shadows, whereas from here, it looks like he's like literally stepped out into the light. So the shot I want to get is where he's kind of in the shadows here. So I'm going to have that. That'll give a pretty good, good shot there. So yeah, so we have our shot. And uh, looks like the exposure went down just a little bit further. Uh, the This is the other thing. Uh, I like to have, you know, as much control over my light as possible so in my opinion this still has too much light uh lighting from the back uh 
I actually want the background to be a little darker. Uh, and so the issue you run into with that is the light is pretty much going everywhere. So you want to kind of give yourself a little more control over that. So I have a, uh, what I kind of do is I cover the back of the light to eliminate the glare. And uh, you want to make sure you don't cover the figure in the cell. But you can use like a, a board, piece of paper, or something like that to eliminate the light to block it out. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to use my hand uh, and I'll show you the difference of, you know, so you can kind of get that sweet spot of where you want your light to be. So if I take my hand and cover the light, as you can see, it gets a little darker as opposed to that. I bring my hand back, you can see. And then you want to kind of uh, make sure you don't do too much in the hand because there you can see my hand is now covering and it goes up too dark. There's too much. So you want just enough light in there to just cover the back. And again, that just gives you a darker background as opposed to having something like that. So with this here, it's like he's right there in the darkness. It really gives that good shot. So we'll go ahead and take our shot from here. It'll give you a long exposure, but it's okay. Look at that. That gives you that really good dramatic shot. So let's be a little more dramatic with him. Uh, so he has this shot, but you can do like, it's also a really good, nice pose there where he's looking up at the incoming light, uh, which looks good. Now this is the other thing I like about the shadowing. And this is another reason why I keep my settings on my lights low because, uh, with the shadowing, any lines, because it's a toy, any lines that you see where the joints are, because of the shadows, the shadows will hide it. And so therefore it makes it a little more dramatic. So for this, I don't know, he's kind of looking up there and he looks uh, kind of give him a mean look there, but bring in the light a little more. And it gives it more of an innocent look. Just all from the change of the light. See if I'm doing this here, then you know it's just kind of a it almost gives like an evil vibe to it, you know, with that darkness. That's what that's what kind of brings it in. But just literally just a movement of the light, just that one scene just brings it a little bit of some innocence there to it. So we're gonna go ahead and go with that shot. And again, just eliminating the background, moving my hand and just gives that darkness there and gives it that great shot. And there we have it. Great, great shots. So yeah, so this is uh, pretty much how you pull that off with the lighting and everything. Hopefully that was pretty helpful with you. Uh, but yeah, your, your lighting just really gives that dramatic effect of what you're trying to go for when it eliminates it. You know, if you're trying to do the same thing I'm doing, which is trying to make the toys look as real as possible. These are great toys, and not just these kind of toys, it's you know, any kind of toy you wanna to use to give it that dramatic look, uh, it just really adds to it. But again, this is what I'm using uh, as far as my camera, but I've done these same kind of shots with my phone, uh, which you'll see these pictures here. They're pictures that were taken with my phone that still give that same dramatic effect. You might have to do play a little bit more when it comes to your lighting, uh, but the end result is still the same as you can see. So yeah, so that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, hopefully you'll see more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, please leave it down below. Thanks so much. Have a great day.